This podcast has been brought to you by Voyager's World. We are building the most amazing hospitality network. Please visit our website, join us for free, and start participating. Karenko. Do I say your name correctly? Uh, actually, my full name is Daniel. Daniel? But, Makarenko. But it's Makarenko, right? Yes. Cool, cool. Yeah, I don't like to screw up people's names, and, and so I always start by asking that. Well, it's yeah. in English, but in yeah. my local language, in Ukrainian, it sounds like uh, Danilo Makarenko. Danilo. Danilo Makarenko. Makarenko. Uh-huh, cool. And in Russian, it sounds like Daniel Makarenko. Uh-huh. Um, well, uh, so I met Dan uh, probably the first time at Taraska, right? Yeah, should yeah. Be. maybe at Obolon before, but I, I wouldn't remember. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely at uh, Tarasova Gora. And it has been a, almost a year that I am in Ukraine. So our paths crossed several times at Route 66, at some other mm-hmm. uh, concerts and, and shows. So I noticed that you are always you are always there with interesting people, telling some good stories. You know, you you are present and at all these events, which shows that you are a major biker. In, in, you know, in, in the in the Kiev uh, community, you you go to all kinds of places. So can you can you give us like a just a, a, a general idea of all the places that you have been and the trips and how has been your history with traveling so far? Uh, with well, I'm traveling all my life, uh, mm-hmm. starting from childhood. I grew up in Thailand and uh, living there together with my pa- parents, mm-hmm. and uh, returning there almost every year, spending there some like several months. Mm-hmm. Last year I spent. Uh, seven months in Cambodia and Thailand, both of them, uh-huh. so going back and forth. Uh, uh, also, I'm traveling here in Ukraine every mm-hmm. summer. I spend three weeks, one month uh, before uh, when mm-hmm. Crimea was uh, Ukraine uh, was not occupied. Uh-huh. It is to Ukraine. Is just under occupation. Yes, yes, I consider it as occupied territory. That's right. And, uh, I'm personally very sad about this because mm-hmm. every year since 1983, it was uh, the thing that I was waiting whole year mm-hmm. to go to spend two, three weeks, four weeks, sometimes five weeks mm-hmm. on the seashore with my tent, with my friends and uh, camping. Always camping. Yeah, Mm -hmm. always and uh, diving in the sea, hunting, uh, Mm -hmm. uh, spear fishing. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was big fun for me, uh, the way of living. Mm -hmm. Uh, I took my kids there and uh, it's a big part of uh, uh, my family history, you know, Mm -hmm. in my life. So it's really sad to me that this happened. Mm-hmm. Okay. Once even I was thinking to buy some property there, mm-hmm. I don't know what stopped me. Well, I know what actually stopped me. <laughs> uh, the, the main reason was not 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 to sit on, in one place. I understood yeah. that I would never appreciate to go just to one place in Crimea, uh-huh. to, to my apartment. Yeah, not, not to be fixed somewhere. I don't like this. Yeah, and the apartment is not nearly as fun as camping. Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's um, a feeling of uh, security that people have in holding real estate, right? Yeah. Uh, which I believe that in many cases is an illusion. You know, they say, "Oh, but that piece of, you know, that apartment I own." Yeah, but you own it as long as you pay the bank, you know, and, and you just need to, like in America, in some places, you just need to not pay your taxes for a few months and it's gone. You know, it's taken from you. So it's, uh, or, or you can uh, also 
have the problem of because you chose one place, you're saying no to every other, yeah, place, other places. You know? yeah, sure. So now everywhere else you don't go because you have that one place that you're committed to. You know, or you get a or you buy a house and then that is a, an opportunity to do a better job somewhere else. And now you can't go or, or it becomes more difficult to go because yeah, exactly. uh, you are tied up to, to that one location. It's a huge anchor. It is, it's an anchor. Yeah. Uh, the, the Bedouins have an expression that they say that the house is the tomb for the living. You know, so it's a, yeah, I think that in a, in a, in a more positive way, you would say, yeah, it's an anchor. <laughs> <laughs> it's an anchor. <laughs> That's what it is. Uh, so you have been camping a lot. So you understand when I say this. One f- major thing that inspired this podcast is is when I was uh, last year, I was in a camping, a little camping trip. And, and we made a fire, you know, we set up the tents, you know, with the motorcycles. And, and then we made a fire in the middle and we all sat around the fire. And we were just talking, you know, it was just a bunch of friends talking and drinking. And, and I was thinking, wow, you know, we, we have been doing this as a, as a species for about two million years, something like that. That's why it feels so... Maybe even more. Well, maybe more, yeah. I've been in place in South Africa uh-huh. where they said they found a, a skull uh, uh-huh. old as about four million years. Yeah. So, so, yeah, the evolution of, of modern humans is, is about at least two million, but it may be a lot more. So imagine for all this time, uh, when we sat around the fire, that's when we felt safe, right? Because you made the fire. Also, you, after you set up your surroundings, after you set up the camp, or after you are sure that that cave is yours, you know, that's when you you make the fire and and it, it means home, right? Yeah. And you're surrounded by friends singing, telling stories. That's you know that that's my passion. I like to do it, you know, when I'm on the road and I camp as you know as as much as I can. But sometimes you're you know you're someplace else uh, uh, working or or for whatever reason you are away from that adventure. So why not get together with some, some friends that have a lot of good stories to tell and then, you know, tell some stories and see what happens, you know, see where we go. Uh, so I, I appreciate you being here, man. You know, it's... Uh, I appreciate uh, you, you inviting yeah, me. Yes. And uh, tell me about that, uh, uh, those long trips you did by motorcycle. Um, um, I am particularly curious about that. In uh, 2012, uh, Ashot uh, invited me to participate in Sri Lanka tour. Mm -hmm. Uh, That time he was going to Sri Lanka for the second time already. Mm -hmm. So he described me his first trip and I liked liked it and decided to try to go. It's it was amazing Mm -hmm. because I did not expect that Sri Lanka is such a different first of all country because you get there all sorts of landscapes, Mm -hmm. uh, meaning like flat areas, mountains, Mm -hmm. lakes, uh, valleys, Mm -hmm. uh, pine trees, palms. Everything mm-hmm. you, you, you I, I didn't expect it for, from Sri Lanka, meaning mm-hmm. the nature. Mm-hmm. And uh, this is the most ama- nature is the most ama- amazing and important part of Sri Lanka, is to mm-hmm. me. and also people. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're different mm-hmm. <laughs> from anything else what I have seen. Uh-huh. They're different from Southeast Asia. They're different mm-hmm. from. Uh, Arab world, they're different from India, and I understood okay. later on okay. when I went there the second time, it came to me why they are different. What what is such a difference of Sri Lanka people from all okay. others? The reason is because on one island, there is three religion living mm-hmm. together for centuries, for uh-huh. ages, and uh, they somehow 
uh, get used to communicate in between each mm -hmm. other and uh, th th that makes them different I think uh -huh. I came to this conclusion uh, have been uh, have they been fighting or not fighting no, no, all this no, time? No, no, no. Without fighting? Not a single fight peace. I saw mm -hmm. in Sri Lanka. Mm -hmm. I, I went in 2013, next year, I went for the second time to Sri Lanka trip. Mm -hmm. First time we did 1,700 kilometers, something like that, and second time mm -hmm. we did uh, almost 2,000 kilometers. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, pretty different routes we took. One uh, first year we went more like uh, uh, east and uh, south through the mm -hmm. coast of uh, eastern coast of Sri Lanka, and uh, first first time we went, second time we went more north, uh, visiting the uh, military zone area, uh -huh. war zone area. Uh -huh. uh, before there was a thirty-year war uh -huh. uh, between. Uh, 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 Sri Lanka civil war uh -huh. between uh, tigers of Tamil uh -huh. and uh, government forces and we visited that area it was uh, the idea of that trip second trip was mm -hmm. to visit that war zone mm -hmm. so we saw mi mines uh, like mine zone they are still they still have minefields yeah. there mm -hmm. and still people working and the, those were mild fields taking out removing. those mines, removing mines from them. Yeah. And it was funny because it, it was raining that the day we saw we we saw the minefield uh -huh. and with people working. Uh, it was raining and uh, somehow the uh, old friends stopped on a side road. Uh -huh. And I stopped, I didn't recognize the reason and all that stuff and I decided uh -huh. to, to go to pee. To, to bush. Uh -huh. and I uh -huh. almost went there, but somebody told me, uh -huh. <laughs> where, where are you yeah. going? Yeah. <laughs> then I, I recognized that there is a mine. Where, where, where am I going? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You go to, to squeeze is, a drop. And, I stopped uh, in front of mine sign, not seeing it, you know. Not, <laughs> not looking at it. You nearly pissed not, on the yeah, side. Uh. No, but not <laughs> seeing it. But I did not. <laughs> Look what is on that sign, what is written on it. Uh -huh. <laughs> I understand it's, but it was like, you know, after some time driving, you, your uh, brain yeah. stuck. Uh, uh, I just, uh, last week, I did another podcast with uh, a couple here that, that you know them, Vladimir and, Ta and Tatiana. Uh, and they have been to Malaysia and, and to mm. some other places. And, and they, they mentioned something like that too, that they, they, they couldn't. They couldn't get out of the road. You know, there is no bathrooms anywhere, and you cannot get off off the road to, you know, to go to nature. So you you need to do it right there on the road, and which is a, a weird situation. But you know, I, yeah, I sometimes I in countries like Southeast Asia and mm -hmm. uh, in Africa, it's better not to step out of yeah. the road. Yeah. Because of. Uh, spiders, snakes, and all that. I, I had also a story about spider. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> it was uh, my third day, third or second day driving in South Africa uh -huh. this November, uh -huh. uh, last November. And uh, I stopped to tell to my friend. So I was on the phone. Mm -hmm. and my leg was on the, on, on the road. Mm -hmm. I was holding bike. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was night. And the headlight was on and motorcycle was on too. I just stopped to tell something. To him. And then in conversation, I just figured out that something with my side mm -hmm. wood, that something jumped into the light. Uh -huh. And something is running very fast in in the light beam. Uh -huh. yeah, but I was continuing talking. But later on, I saw, recognized that this is a spider, big like that, and fast, fast like a car. Uh, it's moving very rapidly. But it is on the road. It's or, on or, the road or... in a light beam of, uh -huh. of my bike. It Crossing was... the road and 
it just jumped from somewhere uh -huh. and started to run in the light beam uh -huh. in different directions. So uh -huh. I, I was busy with, with conversation and didn't uh -huh. pay uh -huh. enough attention to uh -huh. what it is. But later on, I, when it started to run to my leg, uh -huh. I understood that this is a spider big uh -huh. like that. Uh -huh. And it disappeared somewhere near my leg. So I just throw the phone to my uh, back mm -hmm. on the uh, arm wheel uh -huh. and uh, drive away. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what I did when I stopped, I started to search my uh, uh -huh. shoes, my everything for that spider because uh -huh. I didn't know if, if it could go under my uh, Yeah, pants. yeah. Yeah, you don't want a spider crawling on you. I was on the road in uh, South Africa 28 days. Uh -huh. It was second day or third day, 25 or 26 next days, uh -huh. I was very attentive on the road <laughs> and uh, <laughs> in the situations like this. You know, I, I always, when I'm camping, I have this system that I, I take first a tarp and it's a white kind of uh, material that is a uh, house wrapping. Mm. So it's a white material and I take it out first from the bottom of my backpack and I put it on the floor. And then and then I take the usually the the tent is in a separate bag on the motorcycle. So then I bring the tent and I open it, but my backpack and everything else is still on my back. I don't I don't put it on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I and I uh, set up the the screen of of the tent and then I get my stuff straight from my back into the back into the tent and I close it and then I put the cover of the tent so because I really don't like the idea of spiders and and scorpions and all these other things uh, and I never leave the tent with the the zipper open you know I always close the screen I always close the screen um, when people tell me that they they are, oh, yeah, I, I travel, you know, I went to this country and through this thing, and I was, you know, sleeping on my backpack, I said, uh, on my, on, on my uh, sleeping bag. I said, but did you have a tent? No, I would just lay the sleeping bag, and I, I think, my God, I couldn't do this. I couldn't sleep in the open. Um, just the idea of spiders, and in the desert, scorpions, you know. That is bad news. That is very bad news. And and uh, rattlesnakes, for example, in, in California or or in Arizona, um, if you get rescued soon, yeah, you are not going to die. But the experience is horrible. It's horrible. You you inflate like a balloon with something that if you want to see something really gross on the internet, Google that or go to you know, uh, just just search on Google images of people that got bit by rattlesnakes. It's it's something horrible. Um, so South Africa, you and and I I saw a video in that conference, right? Mm -hmm. You were you were showing uh, uh, some images of it. Um, what what was interesting? What was the most uh, that you remember from South Africa? Everything because th this is the best what I did in my life. This yeah. one and a half months in South Africa was uh -huh. were the best, whatever I had. Uh, it's amazing. I, I really appreciate what I did, mm -hmm. and uh, I didn't expect what I would get there, mm -hmm. and uh, it was not planned. Anything was not planned. Anything. You, okay, but in, 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 this... in, in September, I didn't know that I would go there. Yeah. Okay, but in this trip to South Africa and the trip to Sri Lanka, were you using your own bike or did no, you rent? No. It's always rent or using. In South Africa, I was using my friend's bike. Okay. Okay. I have a friend in Rio that when I got there, he let me ride his Harley. Yeah. And in, in, in Rio, 
you know, riding a Harley is a pretty big deal. You know, it's uh, you feel like you are in a movie. You know, um, it was amazing. And then one day in like years later in Miami, a friend from uh, Germany was visiting me, and she has experience riding. So I gave her the keys to my bike, and and off she went. She spent a day riding it. And, and I thought, well, it would be so nice to have, you know, like a, uh, to, to popularize this idea of having a second bike or even letting your own, you know, people ride your own bike as long as they are experienced. You know, you know that, you know, it's unlikely that they are going to have any problem. Uh, so I decided that at some point, uh, if, I, if I ever settle in, in one place, which is unlikely, but if I ever settle in one place, I would have two bikes, you know, just to have one to offer my friends. Because to go, imagine like to go to uh, to America, for example, it's, it's not such a big deal for a lot of people. They can they can take a couple of weeks and, and fly. But sending a motorcycle is complicated. And I know because I did it. Yeah. And, and buying really a motorcycle sounds uh, complex and it's intimidating. You know, it's very intimidating. So a lot, a lot of people wouldn't do it. Uh, I sent my motorcycle from from Miami to Amsterdam in 2011, and it's still here. It's the one that you saw here. Mm-hmm. The thing with uh, uh, shipping a motorcycle is not that it's too complicated and it's not too expensive. It's about a thousand dollars, maybe a little more each way. Uh, but you need to, to calculate the time well. You, you need to m- make sure that that you can wait five, six, two weeks for it to be ready on the other end. Um, and that time is very flexible. It may be, it may be that in four weeks they call you and oh, your bike is ready, you know, mm-hmm. and and they will only wait for like another week or ten days without charging you extra to hold it. You know, um, or you can send the bike, expecting that it will be there in five weeks, and it takes three months to get there. You know, the, depending on the way that you ship it, the timing. If you ship it as cargo, the timing is very unpredictable. But if you ship it on what is called consolidator, so your motorcycle will go with a lot of other motorcycles and cars. Then, then it's more or less reliable. It's about five, six weeks across the Atlantic. Um, I'm planning to to do a, a ride in Australia with wow. with the same bike, but it's same situation. You have to send it and wait for a couple months. And with and then Australia, it it's even more complicated because you need to have a certain papers. Yes, uh, they have that carnet also. system. Yeah, and it's expensive. Um, Getting the carnet is expensive, it's a few hundred dollars, but but you have to make a deposit of um, that is equivalent to to it's it has to be more than the import taxes mm-hmm. in that country, uh, and in a lot of these countries, the import tax is, is the price of the bike, you know. So you may have to put several thousand dollars in an account. And, and you get the money back when you return, mm-hmm. when you leave the country, then you get the money back. But that means you had to have that money to set aside, which for some people will be a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, and that is this, this inconvenience, you know, okay, you have this to do all this paperwork ahead of time. In some countries, they make it very difficult. Uh, like I, I, I heard that uh, Romania, for example, it's very expensive to get it. Um, I don't know how it is in America. Germany is, is easy. So it depends. Depends where you are. No, but in mm-hmm. Romania you can drive through Romania. I'm sure. No, no. I mean, if you are if you are a citizen of Romania ah. and you need to get it through the Romania ah. Auto Club, then then you are going to have to pay their fees, and their fees are super high. You know, if you are here, you are going to do it through the whatever is the Auto Club in Ukraine. You know, but and you pay their fees, you know, so the, depending on, on the country that you're from, it can be a pain in the ass. No, but no. if you want to drive through Romania, oh, you, you can drive to, without yeah, a problem, you just, just you just yeah. get in, yeah, no, no problem at all. Um, I did yeah. that, I did that in, in all over Europe already, and 
no uh, Trans Garage uh, past Airbnb? Yes, I I did the Transfer Garage Center. Uh, did you? No, I'm just All right. curious me... to do it. Okay, I'll give you my opinion on it. Uh, the road itself is awesome. Okay, it's it's just as interesting as as any of the uh, the passes in the Alps. Okay, mm-hmm. uh, I prefer though to be in the Alps because when you finish, let's say you go and you do Stelvio Pass or you do the Col de Lizeran or any of the other ones, when you finish that, you are in the Alps. Mm-hmm. You know, now you can just turn around and ride another couple hours and you are in another amazing mm-hmm. place, right? Yeah. And when you do Transfer Garasana, okay, you have... Transfer Garage. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Transfer Garage, they say. Here. Um, when you do that, now you have two options. <laughs> you go to Bucharest or you go to Transalpina. You no, know? There, there, and is that, there is option. a third one. There is a third so one no, that goes through the valley. You go to... Uh, Dracula, uh, transfer. Yes, and so there are there are uh, those two three roads that are very interesting, but other than that, you are in Romania. You know, it's not that it's kind of flat. You know, uh, Romania gets interesting is when you go way to the uh, further north, and then you are in the mountains. Then it's it's cool. Or when you are in the West and then, you know, that is uh, Hungary and there are some other interesting cities along the border. Or, in other words, it's a little bit empty. You know, I don't I don't like it. I was um, surprised last year. Yeah. I was driving several times through Romania uh-huh. uh, to Bulgaria. Yeah. Now, when Crimea uh-huh. is gone, uh-huh. I switched to Bulgaria. Uh-huh. And so I'm driving to Bulgaria uh-huh. in the summer now. And last year, we decided to travel around Romania. Uh-huh. And it was a big surprise to me because I was thinking that Romania is a flat country, just with some mountains. Yeah, it has those mountains in the middle, but yeah. it has some long stretches of nothing and of nothing interesting. So doesn't mean that I don't like Romania. Don't get it wrong. I like it. And it's very friendly. I, I have been to Bucharest five, six times already. Okay, so it is it is an interesting country, but if I was going to travel to do a mountain pass, mm-hmm. that would not be my choice. Uh, then I would go to the Alps, or or if I'm going to Romania, it's because I'm doing something else too. You know, I'm doing you no know, then because I want to spend some time in Bucharest, which is a is an interesting city, or because I want to go to Bulgaria, you know, which is a, another very interesting destination. Um, but when I, when I was in Sofia, I spent six months in Sofia, mm-hmm. uh, six uh, weeks, I mean, in Sofia in 2014. And it was so easy. Any day you could get on the bike, ride for an hour or two, because if you ride for three hours, you're outside of Bulgaria, right? So you only ride for one hour or two and you visit some small village or a monastery or something that is amazing. You know that you know they have all these small destinations that are super old, you know, historic places, and then you ride back and you're home. You know, um, so I found Bulgaria more dense with things to see. Uh, um, A lot of things. <laughs> every yeah. Each and every corner you can find. Yeah, some you place ride, of interest. Yeah, you ride half, literally half an hour, and you are in the next interesting place. Um, this this next time that I go, I want to visit um, uh, a monastery that they make wine, and they have a wine fountain. So you go there, and they have this <laughs> literally a fountain outside of the monastery, and you just bring your cup, <laughs> <laughs> you drink wine. So with a, a friend there, we want to go and camp next to the monastery <laughs> and go to the fountain to to get wine. Uh, I had a kind of problem before uh, because I, I I had to find a place beautiful underwater mm-hmm. and in Bulgaria it was a kind of uh, difficult because uh, it has a sandy beaches uh-huh. almost but yeah. uh, if you want to see something underwater it's mm-hmm. better to have a rocky beach yeah. so last year finally I found one it's almost on the Turkish border mm-hmm. about 30 kilometers 
purpose of Rocky uh, Beach and uh, amazing underwater valleys mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of creatures so it's good for spear fishing mm -hmm. and uh, nice snorkeling snorkeling and mm -hmm. the area is beautiful also forest mm -hmm. mountains mm -hmm. pine forest mountains mm -hmm. and the sea yeah perfect excellent so i'm happy to found it we travel together with my son mm -hmm. just jumped into the car and spent mm -hmm. about five days on, on the road uh -huh. in, a, in that uh, forest on the sea did you go did you go to transnistria or you go around it Trans transnistria in moldova no uh, mm -hmm. i'm going around you go around yeah, yeah. i decided to go I... through once and it was annoying, just annoying. It just was once. Just once. Same to idea. have the experience, you know. Same idea. <laughs> yeah, to have the experience. But I don't plan on, on going through again. Same idea. Yeah. Um, okay. Now on the way back, I'm going through, I'm going to Lviv first and then south towards Cluj. In... And also Moldavian border is something. I was asked for bribe. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't like it. Yeah. Funny, everybody told me, oh, they are going to ask you for bribes, and, and they didn't, actually. Uh, in Moldova, it was all by the books with me, but but it was such a, 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 a waste of time, you know, like spending so much time in borders, and, you know, it wasn't a, literally an entire day, mm -hmm. you know, just dealing with that, and uh, no. you know, between, between Moldova, um, getting from Romania to Moldova was simple, but well, getting, getting Moldova to Transnistria, Transnistria to Ukraine, and then through in Ukraine was stuff that they uh, just a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of talk, and, and at the end it, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you get in anyway, but you know, I, I prefer to spend those hours going around and writing somewhere better. Yeah. Better to be on the road, not, yeah. not on the customs. Yeah. And, and someone told me that that road that goes from Odessa to Moldova is very bad. There is no road. Yes, and some people say that, no, there is no road anymore. There is no road. Yeah. It's uh, <laughs> soil. Yeah. It's covered in dirt. and It's just and dirt holes. and uh, there is no road surface on mm -hmm. it at all. Wow. Well, so it's, it's just a, it's a road for enduro. It's perfect, really off road. Perfect for enduro. Uh -huh. <laughs> extreme enduro, extreme riding. Why don't they fix that, man? You know, it's such a convenient. It would be such a convenient road. Uh, I saw pictures last week in Facebook. My friend mm -hmm. did it. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that's why I could trust those pictures. Uh -huh. <laughs> he uh, uh, was on the road construction site from Odessa to Rini. Mm -hmm. so, so they, they are building they are, it. They are building now, now, these days. So mm -hmm. Probably it would make sense to try this summer. Mm -hmm. I hope they will finish before June, July. Well, let me tell you something about finishing Maybe. roads here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> let me tell you something. First time I came here. Yeah, yeah. First time I came to Ukraine um, was 2012. Mm -hmm. There was this segment of the road between Poland, the border with Poland, mm -hmm. and and Rivni, that they were making this wider, much wider road, much nicer. And between here and Rivni is nice. But they were doing that other segment. And someone told me, oh, they were doing this for the Euro Cup, mm -hmm. you know. And yeah. But I came here one week after the Euro Cup, and they were still making it. And then I came back in 2014, two years later. They were still finishing it. <laughs> so they, they were making the road for the World Cup. And two years later, it's still not done. I crossed that road from Odessa mm -hmm. to Rini completely for the last two years mm -hmm. from my list. I'm traveling to Bulgaria through uh, mm -hmm. Chernivtsi mm -hmm. going up. Mm -hmm. It's about 300 kilometers 
longer, mm -hmm. but faster, definitely. Yeah. Yes. Um, because last time I was driving it, uh, it took me eight hours to drive about, no, not eight hours, six hours. To drive 120 kilometers. Mm -hmm. Because I was driving like 20, mm -hmm. 30 kilometers per hour. Yeah. And this. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 slalom. Uh, slalom. The, the 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 road between. Um, I don't remember the name of the place now. But when I crossed the border into Ukraine, I was going to this little town. Uh, where my friend lives, it was just some twenty kilometers from the border, and yeah, it took me an extra Volgrad. hour. No, it was Kir... Ismail. No. Kilia. Oh man, I forgot. I don't know. But it's... It's on the way to Uman, but but just 20 miles from the border. Uh, but it took it took that much. And things fell off the bike, you know, because it, it's, I was hitting... Even avoiding it, there were so many holes that occasionally you hit them, right? Ah, uh, the... the I had new horns on the bike, they fell off, luggage fell off, you know, a lot of stuff. So it, it was it was complicated. But at the same time, people ask me, uh, uh, so how do you like the, the, the Ukrainian roads? You know, because they, they make fun of it. And I say, well, depends which ones, because some of them are good. You know, I did uh, recently a trip to Lviv and it was nice. And it was okay the entire the entire way. There was maybe one kilometer of construction, and the rest was was European standards. Yeah, because um, Lviv is the best road we have in UK. Yeah, and here to Rivni is fine. After Rivni, then that's where <laughs> it gets funny. Um, so South Africa. Anywhere else? That is... Thailand, Cambodia. Ah, Thailand, Cambodia. Was that on the same trip? No, no, no. Different years, different uh -huh. trips, different means of uh, traveling. Uh, what do you mean? Yeah, not only bikes, ah. by cars, by buses also sometimes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Any plans are going to America? Uh, the main plan is not to have any plans. Uh -huh. You like that, to improvise a lot. Yes, that, mm -hmm. that is the main plan. Mm -hmm. Maybe just general direction, but no, uh -huh. not as a plan. One thing that I'm I'm practicing now is uh, uh, when I make my 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 travels, I try to to not set up the distance in such a way that I would need to do more than, let's say, 200 miles a day, 300 kilometers, right? No more than that every day. So it would be like from here to Lviv, right? But then uh, in the morning, as I'm riding in the morning, I keep the GPS off. Uh, and, I, and I do my best to guess what is the best road or, you know, I... Uh, Sometimes you are going into a place that it's evident you see the signs on the road, but sometimes it isn't. You know, you're going to some place else where you need to guess. And then after lunch, I turn the GPS on and I see how far off I am, and then I correct, right? But it also makes me uh, discover new places, you know, or new roads that would not be generally used. Sometimes the GPS shows you a road. There will be a shortcut to a place, but in the middle of it, it ends in someone's backyard. You know, it just goes to a farm, and and and, and there is no road anymore. And the GPS, um, <laughs> I remember uh, that day that I, the second day in Ukraine here, I was looking at the GPS, and it and it, it showed this crossing in front of me, and I was in a road that was very straight, I could see it for miles ahead. 
and he showed this crossing. And and a road that was going from south to north crossing my way. And I see in front of me there is nothing. There is just like fields, right? But on the GPS, there was an entire new road that was going somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> just doesn't exist in reality. This happens. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what is now, but until the last time I was driving through uh, Odessa, uh, Reni Road to uh, Bulgaria, uh -huh. there was a certain uh, part of the road uh, that was not exist, but it was yes. shown on the GPS. Uh -huh. So you uh -huh. have to go to the direct straight to the field mm -hmm. and drive through the field. I know mm -hmm. I know people who did it. But if you Even do that, twice. but if you do that enough times, then a road will exist, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> you will make it. <laughs> Somebody did it on a uh -huh. GPS. <laughs> And a lot of people, I think, got caught on that on that mistake. Yeah, um, I did a lot of um, traveling on foot in America, you know, running or walking and hiking. Uh, uh, and sometimes uh, I remember there was this this road that I got that I got on, and it had a sign saying uh, for the cars for traffic. It had a sign saying, you know, the, uh, let's say, um, uh, alternate route, right? Going, going in a different direction. And I thought, well, but that's for cars. Maybe that is just some construction, right? Um, so I kept going. I was just walking. And I got to, to a certain point and the bridge was down. And, and I look around and I figure out that there was a way that if you go like if you go this way and then that way you could cross the river over the 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 pieces of the old bridge, right? So I cross and I went and I end up on the other side. And on the other side there was a farm. And I and I asked I asked a farmer that was there, so how long the bridge has been now? He said, Oh, about twelve years. And I was thinking, and Google still shows the road, it's, it's just fine, keep going, right? So for 12, 12 years, the, the bridge is down. And I kept going that way, and the farmer asked me, so where, where are you going? I'm going to the next town and all that. He said, but you know that it's a field here, right? I said, what do you mean? He said, the road goes through some cattle fields. Mm -hmm. So just be careful if you, you know, if the... If you see longhorn bulls, they may not like you. You know? But I decided to go anyway, and I had to jump fences and walk between the cows and jump more fences and jump a river. And then and then at some point, there was a barbed wire fence. It, there wasn't a gate. It was just a fence. And I had to, to jump that. And through all of it, broken bridge, fences, cows... Uh, uh, hunting range there was a road on the map <laughs> just go to school you can be in a hurry in, in a one reason when you when it's late enough and you want to sleep and uh, mm. there is some place which is waiting for you yeah. for sleep you know? yeah the, when you're on a journey on a trip you, you don't really on a big hurry yeah normally. one thing is the plane Mm -hmm. When plane is waiting, I, I had to postpone my flight in South Africa for two weeks, <laughs> and it it still it was not still enough for me those two weeks. I, I would appreciate to have another two weeks. What did uh, you see there that you liked that much? Uh, what were specific things that? If to tell about South Africa from the very beginning. The idea was not to go to South Africa. Uh, I called my friend, Peter, his name, in South Africa, with the one purpose. I, I was planning uh, a group of friends mm -hmm. to, to travel with me uh, in February in Thailand and uh, Cambodia. Uh, the plan was to come to Thailand on the uh, 12th of uh, February 
to be at uh, Burapa, uh, Pattaya Burapa by Quick. Mm -hmm. So the Burapa Moro Festival is uh, the biggest event in Asia. Mm -hmm. It gathers about 250,000 people in one day on Saturday. So I've been there for three times and I was planning to visit Fourth time mm -hmm. together with some of my friends. And mm -hmm. I invited, and after Burapa Park uh, uh, Bike Week, the plan was to go to Angkor Wat mm -hmm. to show my friends Angkor Wat and then to travel down through the jungles for mm -hmm. about seven to ten days traveling on bikes through the mm -hmm. Cambodian jungles. Uh, then to travel in parallel to the uh, uh, sea coast. Mm -hmm. But through the again on bikes uh, for two three days on uh, through the national parks, uh, forests, lakes, mountains, very mm -hmm. beautiful places in Cambodia. Mm -hmm. Some caves, visit some mm -hmm. uh, huge caves, very interesting. Also. And then to have some four or five days of. Uh, sea rest, mm -hmm. rest on the seashore on, uh, to visit some islands, beautiful islands, mm -hmm. to have some swim, snorkeling, all that, to have a rest after three. So I came to call to my friend offering him, would you like to come with me? He said, mm -hmm. wait, wait, wait. It was August like that mm -hmm. when I called. He said, wait, wait, wait. First, you will come to visit me here. Mm -hmm. I said, you're joking, uh, well, mm -hmm. come on, South Africa, South East Asia, mm -hmm. we cannot do it <laughs> two in one time. <laughs> I said, no, 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 you, you should come. It was obvious. Then uh, I returned from Bulgaria, Romania to, to, to Kiev, uh -huh. started again in this story. Peter, uh -huh. are you coming with me? He said, no, no, no. I told you, you have to visit first me and then we will go together with you <laughs> to South Africa. I said, okay, mm -hmm. if you so short, then send me an invitation. Mm -hmm. Next day I had an invitation in my mail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I took an invitation, went to the embassy mm -hmm. on the next day. And uh, the visa, yeah. that, that helped prepare South Africa. So there wasn't mm -hmm. any plan, there was nothing. Uh -huh. Then I, I asked what we will do. He said, ah, we, I, in August, he told me that he has a bike, mm -hmm. GS1200. And so the plan was what we have discussed, that we will get another bike and we will travel together mm -hmm. through South Africa. When I came to Johannesburg, where he's, he lives in, he lives in Centurion, not between Johannesburg and Pretoria. Uh, we spent two weeks sightseeing around, mm -hmm. walking, and then I asked Peter, where is your bike? He said, I sold it. I said, what? Ah. <laughs> what? He said, I sold it. <laughs> so what? I said, what I'm doing here? <laughs> Why are we going to <laughs> travel so around? He invites South... you for a motorcycle ride and he sells his bike. Yeah, okay. I don't know what was shown on my face that <laughs> minute, <laughs> but in a couple of days, <laughs> tonight, Peter appeared with his... Uh, phone showing me is this a good bike this is bmw 1200 we are going to get it now <laughs> Stand up, let's go <laughs> so we got that bike on saturday uh -huh. and on uh, tuesday i left already but uh -huh. i left alone because peter has some business to do he didn't he had no possibility to travel together with me uh -huh. Uh, because of business, uh -huh. but uh, we agreed that he will follow me uh, by plane. Uh -huh. For like, when I'm in Cape Town, he will join me for two three days. Then mm -hmm. in Muscle Bay, just because, just a few points. Yeah, right? yeah, a few points. Okay. The uh, Peter went to visit you in some cities. Yeah, he along, visited along the way. He visited me on. on so the the idea mm -hmm. was to go from uh, Johannesburg down mm -hmm. to Cape Town. Mm -hmm. and then 
along the coast on the with the garden route within the garden route mm -hmm. road 62 mm -hmm. to did, go you, did you go to visit the island there in cape town island the uh, the uh, rocky island uh, or whatever the name is where they had the prison there no no, no. I, I did not went there because uh -huh. uh, speaking in guest with back, backpackers in mm -hmm. guest houses i didn't didn't really found something interesting personally mm -hmm. for me okay so in general what i did before uh, i started the route again plan was not to have any plans <laughs> not a single one but uh, i just was curious what what is interesting in south africa so i found an internet uh, 100 places must see in south africa pointed on certain uh -huh. that interested that are of interest to me uh -huh. that I like to some of them Peter looked at them what for are you going to go to visit this I would uh -huh. never go there but it, it's Peter but I like some for example I like caves yes I, whenever I know that there is a cave I, I would go there uh -huh. for Peter it was strange sound what for to go to, to the cave and so my route was something like that. I was going up and down according to the places that I found. Mm -hmm. But th this was not again a plan because every day I was not knowing where I will be on the next day, mm -hmm. where I will stay, where I will sleep, what I will do. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of sort of price every day and it was it was interesting to me to, to travel in the way like this mm -hmm. so whenever I came to uh, city town whatever it is I was asking people what is their opinion uh, what is interesting the most interesting things to mm -hmm. see to visit to try to take and mm -hmm. all that. so according to what was interesting personally to me mm -hmm. I was choosing next things to do to visit to see to taste to try to dive mm -hmm. to, <laughs> to swim whatever cool to plant to hide it. yeah and and back here into Ukraine uh, all wars before on the front line mm -hmm. were Ukrainians in mm -hmm. all wars which former Soviet Union, Russian Empire was participating mm -hmm. in front lines were Ukrainians, Cossacks mm -hmm. and other Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. Even the most, uh, as they, uh, their warriors, Cossacks, mm -hmm. they're still Ukrainians who, who live in Russia. Yeah. I had a conversation with one academician. Uh, he he tell maybe the things that everybody knows, but mm -hmm. uh, it was the first time like three four years ago when I started to put things together. Uh -huh. How did Russian Empire conquered Siberia and Far East? They took one Ukrainian village, mm -hmm. removed whole village to nowhere in Siberia, mm -hmm. in the deep forest, hundreds, thousands mm -hmm. kilometers far, far away from any city, any other village, put them inside in the middle of this for forest, mm -hmm. leave them, and in two years, they bring another two, three villages from mm -hmm. all other parts of uh, Russian Empire. Mm -hmm. Why? So, because during these two years, Ukrainian villagers already had houses constructed, mm -hmm. fields growing, mm -hmm. and uh, animals mm -hmm. breeding. Yeah. It was very convenient. And mm -hmm. they bring from other parts, and the Ukrainians mm -hmm. taught all mm -hmm. others how to mm -hmm. grow uh, the crop. Mm -hmm breed the animals mm -hmm. and all that stuff so it was strategic mm -hmm. behind it mm -hmm. and what happened next uh, a lot of ukrainians now mixed together with uh, all mm -hmm. other nations and also uh, 
they live simply in Russia, so we have similar mentality. Yes, we are very close to Russia, but that is how it was mm-hmm. done in history. How do you feel traveling? I, I, I don't feel unsafe at all, uh, in the sense that uh, the, the experience that we have while we are traveling by motorcycle, we camp where nobody can see us, we are usually surrounded by friends, so we are pretty safe. No, you know? I was traveling, in, for example, in South Africa, I was traveling alone. Yeah. 28 days, I had Peter somewhere. Sometimes, yeah. On, on, driving uh, with a car, uh-huh. a rented car uh-huh. nearby. But it was like out of 6,000 kilometers, maybe we drive together maybe 300 kilometers. Mm-hmm. That's it for, for all trips. So, uh, mm-hmm. but. And South Africa is not easy country in criminal. That, that would be that would be scary for issues, me. Yes, uh, because it is a very violent country. I we saw even several times the gun mm-hmm. using uh, mm-hmm. events. Let's say mm-hmm. something like uh, robbery of huge supermarket with the gang bang and with mm-hmm. a lot of police involved in that shootings. Uh, chasing mm-hmm. all that stuff that was on our uh, uh-huh. on our rise, everything. Yeah. So we we. we uh, <clears throat> but thanks God, we just passed it by already. Mm-hmm. So uh, there were some parts of road that I was advised. For example, uh, Umtata is the name of a uh, uh, regional center, city. Mm-hmm. And the road before and after, all together about 350 kilometers, I was advised not even to stop to pee. Because <laughs> exactly I was told, if you will see that there is nobody around and you decide to pee, you will stop, you will be surprised the where those are people. 20 people <laughs> get off. Uh-huh. nearby you, you know? uh-huh. uh, and that they will take the, not your life, but everything what you have. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I had a scary situation when there was a, a detour and I missed right the direction of the tour. Uh-huh. It was the tour, big sign to the left and uh-huh. small sign to the right, and I was driving already like uh, 300 kil- it was in Umtata exactly uh-huh. in that city uh-huh. the, where you the were told dangerous, not to stop yeah the most dangerous one uh-huh. exactly the most dangerous place on, of my 6000 kilometer trip you took the I wrong did turn. a mistake I would not dream about of it even in a <laughs> in a worse dream you know uh-huh. I had to turn to the right according to small sign, but I turned to the left according to big sign. Uh-huh. And uh, I appeared in the middle of Mtata on the crowded bus station uh-huh. with uh, not really cheap BMW 1200 you, you... with all boxes full of my stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and to 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 them, your motorcycle looks like a you know, a, million on a the road. Million, dollars, <laughs> million yeah. on the road. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. So it looked and like I, a big I saw those eyes of people. It was surprise mm-hmm. for me, but it yeah. was even bigger surprise for, for all those people on that bus station. Yeah. And there were thousands of people, not hundreds, thousands of people. In wow. Mainly men, not women. And mm-hmm. it was like, I can show it, when people walking, you know, discussing something, and then they see me, and then they recognize that, wow! Uh-huh. And then they, and, uh-huh. and I'm past already. They uh-huh. simply didn't have enough time to hit, uh-huh. to uh-huh. Dis- make a decision, to hit uh-huh. me off the bike, uh-huh. and take everything from me. Uh-huh. You know? But it was on their faces that, he, Yes, yes, ah, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> so you just kept going. What, what I was do? just keep going, not stopping. And uh, finally, I thanks God, mm-hmm. BMW 1200 
is uh, an off-road bike. Mm -hmm. So finally, I found the way through con road construction area because the uh, one direction of road was blocked and there were some repair works going on. And I found after this bus station, I found the way mm -hmm. uh, that I can uh, join the normal road, road yeah, and continue driving. So I was without any stop. And I also mm -hmm. found some car already going after me, chasing me. I don't know, but, but I so that it uh -huh. follows me for uh -huh. a certain period of time. So I just accelerate uh -huh. and yeah. <laughs> jump through some <laughs> off-road area and <laughs> escape. But I had about 15 minutes driving around that bike st station area uh -huh. and the adrenaline in my blood was enough for yeah. the next two days <laughs> yeah that 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 could go bad <laughs> yeah and i was advised that this part of the road is the worst part of all south africa mm -hmm. so don't stop don't pee don't eat don't drink mm -hmm. fill your tank full before to have enough to fill another time in in, in mm -hmm. the uh, end of in the city of mm -hmm. the end of the day journey. Mm -hmm. On this part of the road, I've got first real trouble with the bike. <laughs> so last 20 kilometers of this journey. Of all places. Yes. <laughs> That's exactly. where you had a problem. <laughs> I had a problem. <laughs> I had to there? wait then for four days for uh, because it was Friday and BMW opens on Monday. So to talk to them was possible only on Monday, yeah. but they were able to send the uh, truck for, not truck, but car to pick uh -huh. my bike up on it, uh, only on Tuesday. Uh -huh. So I spent uh, five days, not, not Friday, four, four, Saturday, five. Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. on Tuesday I left in the morning. But in a wonderful place and beautiful place, but it was raining. Uh -huh. On the seashore, but not, not really good weather was, so I mainly sit in a hotel, in a hostel. Uh -huh. did, did you use, do you use hostels more? Hostels, uh, sometimes hotels, um, mm -hmm. but I prefer mainly hostels and backpackers places. Uh -huh. Mainly that. Yeah. I prefer this. Uh, I like that too, especially if I'm driving, traveling alone. Yeah. I, I really like it. As you go there, there is always there is always a bar or a cafe, and you go there and you talk to people, or you don't. And easy going you know, people. Easy going. And, uh, I'm traveling all my life. Mm -hmm. and I don't really need to stay in uh, five-star hotels, I don't Oh, yeah, I like it. Okay. Yeah. But no need for that every day. Yeah. For example, um, I had a birthday there on the uh, 1st of November. And uh, Peter took me to Sun City. And Sun City is one of, I don't know, six or seven in the world. Hotels has uh, six stars. Mm -hmm. So Sun City is one of them. So we spent uh, two days in Sun City. And I will, but it's amazing, right? I think everybody should see mm -hmm. this. It's a nice place to be. Very beautiful, very big and mm -hmm. giant, I would say. Mm -hmm. With all infrastructures, with uh, bars, restaurants, concert halls, golf mm -hmm. fields, swimming pools with waves, and uh, lake. You can drive there with the scooter, uh -huh. or a scooter, big lake. Uh -huh. um, I enjoy it. Uh -huh. And even in that six, <laughs> six star hotel on the fourth floor, monkeys 
can steal everything from <laughs> everything <laughs> from your room. <laughs> so they, big, they have a big science closed window. Have to close the window because of the monkeys. And I, and I saw the two families of monkeys there. <laughs> Man, that the, the, the world is pretty amazing. Uh, pretty, quite, quite interesting. <laughs> so Ukraine has been awesome to me. You know, I'm I'm here almost a year now. So uh, be, uh, when I leave, it to be very close to a year. And what I noticed is different here was that when you come in as a biker, um, you feel more welcome. It's like more friendly. The bikers here help each other or they talk to each other, I would say, more than anywhere else. Um, and I don't need to bullshit anything. That's what happened, you know, or at least that's what happened to me. Uh, of course, the uh, I made biker friends anywhere, you know, Germany, in America, in Romania, everywhere. But here, it was more. To the point that I have, uh, I was just looking at the guest list for my for my going away party mm -hmm. by the end of the month, and and I thought I probably have more friends in Ukraine than I have in America now, and that's in just one year, you know. It's just one year. Um, I went to a camp, uh, a camp out in, in end of May last year, someplace north of Kiev. It was fantastic, fantastic. The way, the way that people connect to you, doesn't matter if you speak Russian or not, if they speak English or not. If they don't speak English, they speak vodka, and you know, they, <laughs> and it's everybody has a good time. But but it was truly friendly. Uh, like when people, the, the first guy that I met was Vladimir. He gave me his phone number. This was the first thing he did. He gave me his phone number. Say if you have any question, if you have any troubles. You know, you call this number, someone will help you, you know, we'll figure out, you know. But the same when I went to this camp out, you know, like two different guys that they had uh, uh, trucks that they do like service, motorcycles, stuff like that. You know, they they gave me their number. They said, no matter where you are, someone will pick you up, you know. And, and if I can do that with my own truck, you don't pay anything, you know, just... Just let us know if you need, you know, if you need anything. Or uh, I had people build accessories for my bike here and give them to me for free. Uh, or when I had to have something fixed, you know, usually someone would step up. Oh no, I do it. Like uh, I was uh, having the clutch fixed once, and a guy saw, oh, that is this little part in the middle of the the clutch lever that was that was getting worn out and instead of being round it was getting a little out of shape and but that's the kind of part that you cannot buy just that part you will have to buy the entire lever and everything uh so he made he made one at home he took the measurements mm -hmm. and at home he has the tools for that so he made the part and put it on my bike for me you know so never charged me anything never said anything you know, so people and and I only and I only noticed that after it was done. You know, they said, "Oh, this is shiny." I said, "Yeah, this is new." Oh, you guys put it new? No, the other guy he made it and he took the measurements and he put it. <laughs> so cool. I yeah. like our bikers community. Yeah, it's 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 very intense, very interesting, very welcoming, and I hope that doesn't change because. Uh, when a country is, is in a situation like Ukraine is, where a lot of things are changing, make sure that you don't change what is good. <laughs> you know, some things here are really good, you know, and that, that feeling of, of helping each other, uh, you know, like, uh, one day I was giving an example to a, a, a visitor. Uh, I was showing him Hydro Park, right? So I showed him the, mm -hmm. the, the outdoor gym they have there. 
and and uh, friends of friends that I have here told me that many times, uh, you know, the politicians wanted to remove that, or that were, or they wanted to build something else, or make a park, or whatever it was, you know. But whatever it is, they will remove it to be for something that you have to pay to be there, right? They're not going to, to replace that with something else for free. And and that was always they always resisted that and they keep that old outdoor gym, you know. And sometimes people confuse something that that is uh, being pretty with being good, you know. Yeah, that gym is ugly. All right, let's be clear about it. It's an ugly fucking gym, but it's a symbol of people helping each other. It's people doing things for free. It's it's something that is for everybody, and 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 done it's, by it's some, people for everybody. It, and it's something that is worth protecting. Some people told me that it's one of the, if not the biggest or or the most popular in the world, uh, of, of of a free outside gym. It, it is at least among the best. Um, and it doesn't look like much, but it is amazing. You know, when you, you see people there taking it seriously, you know, the level of dedication that, that, that you can witness there in the morning is amazing. Um, so I like, I like this about, about your country. And, and when I came here, I felt very, very welcome. It felt like home or, or if I, not winter again. Winter um, I can do without. But you know, if I come here during summer, I'll make sure that that I'm here on time for that um, to see my friends. So that that has been really really great. Um, thank you so much. Thanks so thank much for, for talking to us. And it's not thank the first time. Much. And I I appreciate that. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you inviting me. Okay, man. Thank, thank you, you. Very much. All right. We hope you like this podcast as much as we like to produce it. This has been made possible by the efforts of dozens of volunteers, supporters, partners, and visionaries that are helping us build Forager's World. Please visit our website, join us for free, and start participating.